Check this shit out. I've spent a lot of time on this channel focusing on the obscure entries in the Nintendo library. Some good, some bad, and some downright ugly. At times I've focused on specific topics that might include more well-known titles like my clone series, but for the most part I've steered away from more popular titles so that I could spotlight some of the more unknown ones. And because of this arbitrary distinction about what makes a game famous or not, I've stayed away from discussing certain borderline titles that people may or may not be familiar with for no other reason than I don't really know. So screw it, it's time to start discussing some games most people would consider NES classics, starting with Shatterhand. Shatterhand was developed by Natsume, the unsung developing heroes of the NES library. They created a whole mess of titles for the system, including the Power Blade games, Shadow of the Ninja, Abadox, and more. Shatterhand was originally called Tokiyu Shirai Soul Brain in Japan, which was based on the television show Super Rescue Soul Brain, which I think is kind of a Power Rangers style show. Looks awesome. The two games are simple sprite swaps, with the only other changes being the look of the cutscenes and this carnival stage replacing the submarine one in Shatterhand. Like many of the other Natsume games, Shatterhand is heavily inspired by other classic titles for the Nintendo. While Power Blade owes a lot to Mega Man and Scat is a whole lot of Forgotten Worlds, for me the primary influence for Shatterhand has got to be Sunsoft's Batman. While the weapon systems vary, the general combat, platforming, and especially the bleak, neo-futuristic slash industrial wasteland vibe is right on the bat nose. Is it up to that game's historic level of quality? Let's find out. When you pop in Shatterhand, you're treated to this sweet intro cutscene where Sleeveless Shades McGee over here goes full Wonder Woman before power punching this dude to oblivion. Sick. I mean, yeah, that's definitely what you're getting into with this game. You start out in a simple stage that eases you into the gameplay a bit as far as combat and items, and even offers up the hardest pose ever of a man hanging nonchalantly off a chain link fence. Y'all really don't want to test this hang game. After you beat this introductory level, you're met with this incredible stage select screen where Shatterhand is watching five TVs simultaneously while his clothes ripple majestically in the wind. I just love the way this looks. So epic. The crux of the gameplay is built around the power-ups you find throughout the levels. There's punch buffs that turn your coat red, as well as health replenishers, both of which you can buy in exchange for gold you get from defeating enemies. The boxes lying around the level hold either more coins, a grenade which hurts you, or a letter symbol of either alpha or beta. If you punch the block, it switches between the two, and this leads to one of the coolest things about this game, your Robo Frat Brother. If you collect three symbols, you'll summon this temporary helper, who has his own weapon and health bar. The Greek letters can be collected in different orders, and each combination creates an alternate cyber companion with new abilities, for eight total options at your disposal. And there's a super bonus where if you collect the same symbols while your side piece is still operable, you'll get a power suit that makes you invincible for a short period of time. As each of these robo buddies is pretty interesting, let's do a quick breakdown of the power up combinations. Alpha Alpha Alpha. Astro Oh Boy rotates the ball around himself. Man, this blows. It's super short range, meaning your guy takes a lot of damage. But also, man, does this actually hit anything? I just can't seem to hurt anyone. Look at this! Alpha Alpha Beta. Cyber Kick, the Cyber Sidekick, shoots a sniper style long shot. Not great. Even though this should help you knock out distant enemies, it's pretty hard to aim. Alpha Beta Alpha. Baby Bender wields a bat. A bat? Well, this is actually better than the last few as it's less about aiming and more about just tossing your buddy directly into the mix. While helpful in just police style beating enemies, it also leads to him taking way too much damage and disappearing quick. Alpha, Beta, Beta. Metal Man Jr. throws bouncing blades. Now we're talking. Not only is this way easier to aim than most, but you can shoot multiple shots at a time, and even if they miss, they can potentially bounce around and still hit your target. This is top notch right here. Beta, Beta, Beta. Optimus Subprime tosses shurikens. This one is okay, easier to aim than many of the other projectile attacks, and it kind of naturally moves to more useful positions. Not super powerful though. Beta Beta Alpha. Robotic operating buddy turns into a Zippo. This one's a mixed bag. The flamethrower is very effective as it's a constant flurry of attack. 
However, it can be both very easy and kind of awkward to aim, and at a certain point, it needs to take a gas break. I find that there are more times than not where I'm trying to use it and nothing happens, which is a shame since otherwise it's pretty effective. Beta Alpha Beta. Less than Mega Man gets boomerang blades. Not awful, as it allows for multiple quick strikes, but it's a bit hard to aim and puts your boy in constant damage peril. Beta Alpha Alpha. El Terminito shoots energy blobs. This is a weird one, as the projectiles follow the ceiling, and once you've put four of them out there, you have to wait till they disperse to fire more. There are points where this really comes in handy, and others where it is completely and totally useless. If I had to recommend one, it'd be Alpha Beta Beta, as I feel like it's pretty straightforward and effective, but I guarantee that certain bosses go down easier with the sniper or the flamethrower. I think at least. The controls of Shadowhand are not perfect. Not bad, just never as precise as I'm expecting. I always seem to be just a little shy of a bad guy to hit him, or just a little short to make what looks like an easy jump. Maybe it just takes some getting used to so that you're always positioned perfectly to wail on some dudes with impunity, but I've played Shatterhand a ton, and I still find myself swinging at air more often than not. And some of the physics here just seem so cheap. Like this water level here, it's got the classic moon physics found in titles like Mega Man, but there's an added driftiness that always seems to pull you into hazards. Also, once you leave the water and the gravity changes back to normal, it feels like you should have a little more lift than you do, and I find myself perpetually missing these platforms over and over and over. And man, when you kick the bucket, they really let you linger on it, just forcing you to gaze at your rotting corpse while enemies continually desecrate your remains. Brutal. And get used to these lingering moments of contemplation, because Shatterhand is hard. The enemies are designed to take a lot of punishment, so that if you have a solid robot companion, they're not too easy, but this in turn means that when you're flying solo, you may need to punch some of these dudes 10 to 12 times, no joke. Also the stages are laden with beginner traps that are completely unavoidable until you begin to memorize the levels a bit, and even then, good luck. The various power-ups throughout the stages do help, but most of the time I find that the hardest part of each level are the sections before you're able to summon your robot or replenish your health, meaning you'll often just play the beginning of the stage for all three lives before giving up and trying a new destination. The odds of you making it to the boss fight on the first try are non-existent, but the chances of you making it past the first section alone are pretty much slim to none. And then there's the boss fights. With the right companion, many of these are a total breeze to just beat them senseless in a few seconds, but as Vanilla Hand, you're going to need to do some pattern memorization and then pray to the Shatter Gods that you pull off every jump and punch perfectly. Except for this madman on the Death Trap Elevator, I still have no idea how to take this guy down. If somehow you're masochistic enough to push through the pain and make it through the six introductory stages, prepare yourself, because the last level is beyond Thunderdome. All the usual barefoot, stepping on a Lego type enemies are everywhere you won't expect. And not only that, but you have to beat all the bosses all over again along the way. And if you eat it, you have to start the stage again from the very beginning. This is brutal. One of the hardest levels of any Nintendo title at the time, punctuated by some of the most frustrating platforming ever. Hey guys, who wants a good shattering? Wait, I'll be right back. Whee! Shatterhand has gained a reputation over the years as not only a hidden gem on the NES, but as one of the best action platformers out there. I disagree. It looks rad, the enemies and boss designs are impressive, and man, this soundtrack is amazing. Most of all, the Robo Combo system is a unique and inspired idea for upgrading, giving the player a ton of reasons to keep experimenting to see which option best fits their playstyle. All that's great, but I gotta say I just really don't enjoy playing Shatterhand. I've made it through tons of extremely difficult NES hard games with similar formats, everything from Castlevania 3 to Ninja Gaiden to Ghosts and Goblins, and honestly, I find Shatterhand to be more frustrating than any of them. Not that it's necessarily more difficult or cheap, but it just feels like I'm always taking damage when I shouldn't, missing jumps when I swear I'm gonna make it, and then just cursing Natsume's name whenever I'm stuck fighting a boss with no upgrades. It never quite feels like I'm learning from my mistakes or really improving in any way. And in these infinite continue meat grinder style titles, slow improvement is all you really have going for you. 
I honestly think the best way to improve Shatterhand would be to make the Robo Bro invincible so you always have him helping you, and then keep the letter mechanic so you can use different combos for different bosses and whatnot. The game would still be incredibly challenging even with this help, but it would at least be marginally, marginally more fair. Still absolutely worth playing as it is, and Shatterhand is for sure head and shoulders above many of the hundreds of action platformers on the NES, but perhaps there are a few other deeper cuts out there that are even better. I've talked about Shatterhand before in my Mega Man Clones video, which is one of my favorites, so if you've never seen that, there should be a link somewhere here on the screen that'll take you right to it and if you want to step behind the velvet rope and into the champagne room head on over to patreon.com slash big words and consider joining the vip i post weekly bonus videos over there and the support goes a long long way otherwise until next time thanks for watching <laughs>